to explain something right from the beginning. I'm going to do a few shows like this. Only uh, people who will see it, coaches that will see it, or players, uh, are in it within a 50 mile radius of uh, one hour Minnesota. Uh, be, but you will notice some things that refer to Basketball Talk Pro. That was an online uh, coaches training school that we ran for five years. Made over around 450 videos, which you can show, which you can watch free. Go to the uh, uh, Basketball Talk Pro website, and they're all on there under uh, archive, archives. Uh, but this show, this uh, production, for it's just for you guys, for a very small uh, group, about 168 uh, coaches, I think, are involved. But today I'm going to show you a shooting drill <clears throat> that is for individuals. It isn't a team shooting drill. It's one I've run a lot. Uh, well, when I say a lot, over years, I guess, uh, but even at that, it hasn't been too many because I'm not a player development guy. I'm a, uh, you know, I just coach and, uh, uh, and, and so I've never really done a lot of this with individual players. Uh, and um, I think maybe the drill you're going to see, uh, I've done maybe with 10 players in my career. But they've been very special players. I use it in this way. I use it if you have a good player that making baskets uh, is a, a little bit of a problem for him. To make him from a good to a great player, I would use this drill. Or I would use it if it was a poor shooter to a good shooter. There's a couple of examples here that I can give you. Two of them were in that category. Uh, I first ran it with a player who was an undersized forward, but very strong, very quick, very good player, important to our team, but he was not a real good shooter, and that hurt us. So he spent the summer with me on this drill. The next player I ran it on was a, a boy that came to us from Chicago. Uh, did not have much background, uh, but was a good player, but a terrible shooter. And even the players would make fun of his shot. His technique was terrible. Everybody told me I had to change. I said I wouldn't. I don't change shooters. I don't change technique. Uh, they can change, but I don't change them. But this player was going between his junior and senior year, and I felt he had a chance in the NBA. Uh, he did too. So he stayed in Texas uh, and spent the summer, and he came to me and said, you know, I want to work out. I want to try to, to, uh, to make a real push to see if I can't make it in the NBA. We ran this drill all summer. Uh, now, you have to remember about anything we do is he had a tremendous drive uh, to want to make that, uh, make an NBA team. Uh, we, he, I think he only missed one time in uh, something like 60, 65 days. Every day we worked on, uh, on this drill. Uh, he made an NBA team. He won an NBA championship. He was an all-star. And he was just uh, inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. I doubt seriously he would have gotten beyond college without, uh, without this drill. Second player was a player that was with the Cavs, which I was with at the time. Seven foot three player. But he had broken his foot and hadn't played for a year, year and a half. Uh, the, but, but he came to me in May and he said, would you work out with me? And I said, yes, I, I will. Uh, but there was a lot of restrictions from doctors and everybody because he was making 12 million a year. 
uh, and you know they had a big investment in him. Uh, so uh, he, we agreed we were going to meet on Monday. He could only work in basketball four days a week. Uh, we decided that Monday, Tuesday, off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, but on the off days, he and I watched uh, watched films to to keep him in uh, a basketball mode. Well, I picked up the paper on Sunday and was just browsing the sports section, and there was a big article about Z. The guy's name is Zedronis uh, Algaskas. We called him Z, uh, and a big article how he was making a comeback, and he was quoted in there as saying. Uh, you know, I'm just going to be happy if I can get through the season. I could understand why he said that, but it, it wasn't what I wanted to hear. So the first thing I came to him on Monday, and he was tying up his shoes, and I said, Zia, read the article. Uh, and if all we're doing here is so you can get through a season, then I don't want anything to do with it. You can get anybody to do that. I said, if I'm going to be involved, the only way is that we're working out not to just get by. We're going to work out with the idea of getting you into the All-Star uh, game. And he laughed. He said, so he, he just couldn't even fathom that. So uh, he was a particular problem because the operation, he could not feel his foot. So he didn't know how he was turning his foot when he put it down. He had no, no way of, of knowing that, so we had to get, get over that, uh, but he made the All-Star team. Maurice made, uh, you know, made the NBA and went on to become a, a, a Hall of Fame player. In both cases, and this is what I want you to um, hinge on, in Maurice's case, he had terrible technique. I never changed him. When we went into the summer, when they came back, everybody came back, they, were, they remarked at, at how uh, he had changed. They said, what did you do to change him? And I said, I never said a word for him all summer. Never, ever brought up his, uh, what his technique should be or anything. Z had picture risk uh, uh, technique. Uh, but he was just a 74% free throw shooter, and I pointed out to him, if you don't move that up, when we need to go to you for a basket, you're going to get pushed around, because they don't care if they follow you. You've got to get above 80%. With this drill, he did. Uh, and they asked him about it, a reporter asked him about it, and here was his answer. Coach Ecker tweaked my shot. I've never tweaked anything in my life, uh, and certainly not a shot. And he, uh, I never said a word to him, but something in both cases drew them out. They made the change in their mind. No one else made it for them. They made it because they wanted to make the shots, and you'll see why in this, in this drill. And in order for them to make those shots, free throws, in, in, in Maurice's case, the jump shots, the brain had to change the shot. The mind, you know, if you go to my, my uh, course that I'm, I'm teaching, trying to teach here, uh, that's the first thing we talk about is the mind. You coach the mind, you don't coach your body. Uh, the mind will coach and take care of, of the body. But in both cases, it changed them without them even knowing it. And that's the healthiest way for all uh, things to happen. Well, I want to move on now to the, to the drill, but I'm going to warn you. It's a very simple drill. But you really have to coach it correctly. And that scares me a little bit. Because I know it's so easy for other coaches to want to diddle here or diddle there. You can't do that with this drill. If you, if you, don't, if you don't like it, then don't do the drill. 
Uh, but if you know how to do the drill, do it exactly like I, I'm uh, telling you. I'm going to put my phone number up here. And rather than you change or think you've got a problem with something, call me. I don't care. You can call me at 3 o'clock in the morning if you want. In fact, you, if, I'm, if I'm on my deathbed and you've got to talk about it, call me and just have them put the phone up. Don't let them tell you I'm comatose. I won't be... Once I hear your voice, I will, uh, I will help you with uh, the drill. I'm that serious about this. My phone number is right there. You write it down. If you're going to run this drill, write it down. And every day something happens, you don't know what to do, call me. And we'll straighten it out. Uh, and you'll, uh, you'll have a good drill. Now, I do things on yellow paper uh, because... To, to draw it up, I can lay it down and it's flat. I don't like drawing on sideways. So I always pre-draw everything, but I can do it on my table. So I'm going to switch over there now, uh, and then uh, we'll show you the drill. Okay, you can't see me. You only see my hand, but that's okay. Focus on what's up here. Not on my hand or on me. The first thing is, it's a, it, it's a one person drill, can be a two person drill, a three person drill, don't even try it, running it in different baskets at the same time. There's no way that's going to that's gonna work and you get the results you want. Here, this is where you sit, you get a chair and you sit there and I'm going to give you a form to use for this uh, drill. Uh, and uh, that's where you sit. Over here, uh, the, the, the rebound, there should be a ball out here. There's three balls total. And we have two more over here. And you have a ball guy, what I call a ball guy. His job is to run after errant uh, types of uh, shots that bounce a long ways away because we don't want the rebounder or this guy to slow down at all in the drill. Now the drill is simple. 15 jump shots moving on every shot. Not moving on the shot but moving to the shot. Uh, you must discipline this because sometimes they get pretty lazy. You got to keep telling them. You can't uh, and you've got to keep moving quick because that's the kind of shot you're going to get in the game. Between, after the 15 jump shots, then 10 free throws. Uh, same, same combination. He comes in, stands on the lane, the rebounder on the lane, the coach on, on the lane. Never, in any of your practices, shoot free throws with a guy standing in the lane. They don't do that in a game. I've never seen a time when they have allowed a player uh, to do that. So practice like what you're going to do in a game. Uh, not just because you're a little lazy to get out there. And I have to, I have to remind these guys ab about that. He shoots 10 shots. That's one uh, segment. One round is what we call it. Then you start over, do the same thing, round two, seven rounds. At the end of the drill, he will have shot 105 uh, jump shots, and I'm pretty sure I'm right on this, 70 free throws. Uh, and you keep track of every shot. And I'll, you know, we'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, the rebounder starts the drill by, and I, I'm pretty lax on this, you know, he may not be cutting right to it. He, it, he might even be just taking a step over there. That starts the drill. The first round of the jump shots, we allow him to shoot and we don't count until he makes the first one. After that we count. The rebounder counts. And he gives the shooter this information after every shot. Four for six. Five for seven. Eight for eleven. And with a, a good loud voice, don't let him just, that's seven for ten. That's, you know, because this shooter 
is calculating all that in his brain. He needs to know clearly and quick uh, and quickly. Uh, they when they finish the 15, then rebounder says to coach. He made 12 out of 15. Now, if you're a coach that's into this thing, you probably know that. But I still want him to tell you uh, so that there's no break in community. It's very important that the, you're accurate uh, with this. Now, never coach. You're, gonna, you're not going to like what I'm going to say next because ego wants you to coach. Ego wants you to direct, but in this drill, you don't say a word about technique. You don't say direct anything, except if they aren't running the drill correctly. If this guy is slow, whatever, uh, the rebounder's throwing bad passes, the rebounder's instructed, no messing around, that pass goes right to the shooter, so he can grab it and shoot. The, the shooter never fakes a shot and never puts the ball on the floor. It's catch and shoot. Uh, that's, that's what we're working on. That's what we want him to get good at. The range, what I do on that is I ask the player, what do you think your range is? And he may say, you know, 18 feet, 17 feet, that's fine. I'll watch him shoot, uh, and then I might correct the, the range. I might say, move out a step, or move in a step, if, he, if I feel he's forcing it. Don't, we don't want him to force anything. Time will take care of it. He will eventually begin to be able to move out, even to the three-point three line. Now, I made notes here because I don't want to forget anything uh, that uh, is, is important. Uh, well, this is one thing a coach should always do, and very few of them do it. Uh, and you probably are all guilty of it. Concentrate on what you're doing. Put everything else out of your life. Give every ounce you can give to whatever you're doing on the floor. The walls fall down. People are screaming. You focus on that drill or whatever you're doing. That's the kind of focus. I, I know that's crazy, but it's the kind of focus you want. And this drill, it's, it's easy to get in that chair and maybe your phone vibrates in your product. You want to look down there and see who's calling. Forget it. You've got a job to do, coach. Your job is helping this guy, not answering your phone. They'll, they'll live without you talking to them. Uh, I, don't, I think I've hit most of the key parts. I don't want to, i got a long list there, but uh, I don't want to give you too much because it's too much for you to, to, uh, to sort out and it clutters your thinking. Uh, what I've told you is enough if you got it and you really do it. That's why I say this. There's going to be things come up in this drill. Uh, that's part of the learning part of it. Call me. And I'm serious. Call me anytime. If it's just impossible for me to, to take your call and I know it's you that's calling, uh, I'll just tell you, I'll call you back in five minutes or six. If you say to me, I can't wait that long, then I'll drop. I don't care. You know, my wife's having a baby. She just have to have a baby. Uh, I'll take your call. Okay? Uh, so, I've given you enough to start. Uh, but uh, but it's pretty serious business. But uh, if you do it right, you're going to see a lot of changes. Here's why it works. What you're training in this is your mind. I've never said anything different. They talk to me about this drill and I, I tell them all. It's a mental drill. I'm training their mind, not their body. Uh, that's why I don't care a lot about 
what their body is doing. Because I know the mind will take care of all of that if it's devoted and concentrates on making shots. And the, and the drill goes like this. He makes shots. We have, just like in golf, we, we eventually, after one or two times, some, I'm able to do it quicker, uh, that, that you determine what his par is. Uh, let's say it's eight, and it's usually going to be eight. By the way, all the guys I mentioned, that they started at eight. They continue shooting eight, and you keep track, and it's, it, it's pretty easy. At the end, you can say, you know, you, you were minus two. So that means you're two short from the par of eight. All right, now, when they get moving, and the first time, you better call me, and they do over eight, two or three days in a row, call me. And I'll listen to you, and I will tell you, okay, move them to nine. And then after that, you will know. Eight to nine, not too hard. Nine to ten, now you're getting there. Now you're starting to get into a category where uh, big-time players are getting. Eleven, uh, this is a tough one to get to. But the last one is tougher. Twelve. All three of those guys got up to 12. Uh, but you realize what 12 is? They only missed three shots uh, around. Uh, that, that's a total of 21 shots out of 105 that they, that they missed. That takes incredible uh, concentration. But once they're there, the next thing you're going to see is what is dynamite. They make all 15 shots in a round. I don't think they'll ever do that till they get to 12. None of them I coached did it. But once they get to 12, the next thing you're going to see, they make all 15. And then after that, they make 15 in a row a lot of times, maybe two or three times uh, in the drill. Now you have a big time shooter. And I don't care if he's playing at Lacrosse Central or, or the Golden State Warriors. That is a big time shooter. And you can make them right on your home, home court. Well, I got to end today. Don't ever tell me I talk too long. If you want to coach, and you want to really coach, time should not be a problem. I try to keep them as brief as I can, but I don't cut anything for time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. It's a good drill for you. Don't be afraid of it, but use me, because I know the drill. Thank you.